morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome back to our monthly get together. And uh, I hope everyone is suitably pleased with their efforts. Certainly, I am bowled over at the way you have taken the bull by the horns. What was that uh, topic I gave you? Who remembers? Three dimensionality. Well, what a task and what a challenge. And you've all risen to it. Every single one of you has included some of the major points uh, that we have gone through. I'm seeing lots of frames within frames. I'm seeing lots of three-dimensionality with acute lighting. I'm seeing lots and lots of strokes. <clears throat> and I can say without a doubt that everyone has adapted, adopted, and included lots of the techniques so I'm really impressed well done everyone well we'll kick off with uh, bill number one <clears throat> and Bill has gone to a stately home somewhere I guess it's National Trust I don't know it doesn't matter and he has very very cleverly used a frame within a frame technique <clears throat> pardon me, um, to let us look through the iron gates, these wrought iron gates at the building beyond. So well done on that. Now, the ideal time to take a photo is not midday with a grey sky. Nonetheless, if you're on a coach trip, um, you will often find that you're in the location at that sort of time. And if you're lucky, you will have acute lighting, which will add three-dimensionality. What do I mean by acute lighting? Lighting off to one side so as to show the texture in the stonework, the different uh, facets of the building. Unfortunately on this day Bill was confronted with a grey sky, very soft light, which is wonderful for portraiture but it's not so jolly good for this particular uh, architecture. Nonetheless I like the frame within the frame I'm just going to look at Bill's EXIF data and I can see that he was using a focal length of 18 millimeters <coughs> and a, a shutter speed of a 200th of a second, great, with an aperture of f8. Now he could easily have gone to f11 or possibly even f16, <coughs> excuse me, African dust on the on the throat there. Um, and um, that would have given him a shorter exposure time um, and a deeper depth of field. Nonetheless, the depth of field is good, the trees in the background are sharp, and he obviously wanted those to be sharp because, after all, it's a version of landscape photography. So I like that a lot. Thank you very much. And moving on. Bill number two, once again we're getting a, a view of a stately home somewhere and uh, luckily enough Bill has chosen a moment when the sky isn't pale grey all the way across. So I love the sky. I further like the bookmarking of the tree on the left, the book ending should I say, and the, uh, the fir tree on the right hand side which is giving us a look through between the trees at this stately home. Once again the lighting isn't quite what we'd like but there again uh, the time that one arrives at these places isn't always at one's own control. So uh, well done on that one. I like the book ending on the left and the right. If I look at the EXIF data now Bill has chosen an aperture of f8 and I'm not too certain why. But it must have been pretty bright or else he's turned up his ISO because he's got an exposure time of a one thousandth of a second. And I really don't know why. Now I would have thought that that's probably because uh, the camera has decided that uh, aperture f8, which no doubt Bill has set on manual or aperture setting uh, with the, uh, the level of lighting and the ISO, which isn't shown on the EXIF data, unfortunately, uh, a thousandth of a second will give him the right exposure, and it has. However, 
if, as I suspect, the ISO is way up to probably 800 ASA, um, he didn't get all of the quality into the photo that he might have got. So, Bill, check your ISO, check your aperture, and look at your shutter speed. It's not necessary to shoot that <clears throat> at a thousandth of a second, unless it's jolly windy and you wanted to freeze the action of the wind on the leaves. And it doesn't look like a windy day to me. Anyway, well done, well seen, well bookended. Thank you very much. Let's go to the next one. And once again, Bill has very, very effectively used these carvings as bookends to the view through to this uh, stately home. Unfortunately, the cloud has rolled in again. We have one of those boring grey skies. The light is very, very soft, and so there, are, there is no texture in the stonework uh, which we could have uh, obtained um, had the light been uh, somewhat more uh, acute to the building. Um, but it's uh, it's a well-seen photo and well-exposed. I will look at the EXIF data. I'm being a bit fussy about this, I know, but nonetheless, <clears throat> that's better. <clears throat> a four hundredth of a second uh, at F8. And once again, I, I question, what was your ISO setting? Um, Old buggers like me, we call it ASA, but you'll find the judges these days will talk about ISO, and it's the same thing, it's the film speed. Now, don't tell me there's no film in your camera, I know, but just watch what your ISO setting is uh, when you then set up your, your camera. Try to go uh, into manual and set all three things separately, depending on the subjects that you're looking at. Now, I can hear someone in the back row saying, I don't know how to choose to change my ISO. Well, the reason is you haven't read your handbook. And if I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. You've got to read your handbook. You must know how to change your ISO. Anyway, good shot, well seen, well exposed. Thanks, Bill. Brenda number one, here we go. Now, once again, we have a beautiful image between two posts, and Brenda has bookended the view through between these two posts down this um, sewage pipe. Well, some people take pictures of bicycles, some people take classic buildings, and some people take sewage pipes. Nonetheless, it leads us in to the photo. I love the fact that the, the photo is bookended by the post on the left and the right, and I further appreciate the horizontal nature of the horizon. Well done, Brenda. Um, it's good to see an horizon which is horizontal. We're led into this photo through down the sewage pipe to the, uh, the outflow marker, um, that post there, which uh, neatly breaks through, together with the other uprights, from the sea up into the sky. Unfortunately, we've got that plain blue sky, which, uh, well, we're not in charge of the weather, <clears throat> but I'm sure you had a good day out um, photographing sewage pipes. So, well done on that one. Thank you. I'm just going to look at your EXIF data. Do tell me why you set the aperture at 3.3. Why on earth have you chosen an aperture of 3.3? And a 13 hundredth of a second. Ah, there are, there are clues here as to what you have set your, your camera on. Yes, yes, I know what you did. Hmm. Now you have to be able to change your ISO. And if you don't know how to... Read your handbook. Well seen. Good picture of a sewage pipe. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Brenda 2. Now we are cooking on gas. That's excellent. Now look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the way that Brenda has chosen her camera position 
so as to show so as to show light on the on the right of the uh, the wooden stump with all the barnacles on it and shadow on the left hand side giving us a roundness a three dimensionality that's what the task was about well done well seen the <clears throat> piece of the stump on the right hand side is is bookending the uh, the uh, image and the the subject as it were the uh, the stump with the barnacles is pretty much on the third on the left hand side so i'm very happy with that i'm further delighted to see the stroke which probably wouldn't show in the Sally Army, but nonetheless it shows on the screen of the uh, individual viewers when we see them on our computers at home. And I'm happy with that. So well done. It's achieving three-dimensionality. That was the task, and you've achieved it. Well done. Uh, let me look at your EXIF data. What have you got? Four hundredth of a second aperture, four point five. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Brenda has chosen an aperture of four point five. Ask yourself why, and the answer is: what's in focus? The subject will be sharp, but the background, the C up in the top left-hand corner and on the left, is out of focus, and that's good. That gives us another aspect of three-dimensionality. Um, a four hundredth of a second. It was pretty bright. Focal length 12.5, okay, you're on a zoom lens, that's good. Aperture 4.5, well chosen. Please, you did that. Thanks, well done. <clears throat> Brenda number three, once again, Brenda has given us a view through some uh, stacks, some rocky stacks to the scenery beyond very well applying frame within a frame. I like the fact that the rocky stack on the left is in the light and the rocky stack on the right is in the shadow. So we've got some depth to this photo. Further looking through at the headland, we can see that part of that headland is in the light and part in the shadow, giving us three dimensionality. Sky, well, you're not in charge of the sky, but there is some detail in it and and yet the horizon seems to show that the tide is going out so check your horizons <clears throat> if you're anything like me if you've any pictures with the sea or a landscape uh, and a, an horizon in it you must check to get the horizon horizontal if it's not the judge will pick it up straight away and dock your marks um, because these images are so good this month, um, if I were judging these, I would be quite severe about knocking off marks uh, for non-horizontal horizons. But now you know it, you won't ever commit that crime, that problem again. You'll always check your horizon. You will hear my voice in your head saying, check your horizon. Well done, well seen, well exposed. Good book bookends, left and right, and there is three-dimensionality. We're looking at a frame within a frame. That's a good photo. Just looking at your EXIF data, aperture 3.4. Why? Why have you chosen 3.4? Did you really want something in the foreground to be sharp? and something in the background to be soft. Well, actually, that's what you've achieved. And it would have been much better at an aperture, perhaps of f11. Um, that would have reduced your exposure time, uh, and that may be then that the exposure would be too long for you to handhold, in which case, of course, I know you've got a tripod, and uh, I know you'll enjoy using it. Not sure what your ISO is. I'm going to guess it's a pretty low ISO. And the lower the ISO, the greater the quality of the image. So I suspect your ISO, though it's not showing on the uh, EXIF data, uh, I suspect your ISO was something in the 100 mark. Um, but well done, and uh, please check horizons.
Dana number one. Wow, what a beautiful picture. I like that a lot. The frame within the frame principle, the mid gray stroke around the image itself. Looking through, the, the viewer is invited to look through and to, to see what the, uh, the two people are looking at. And uh, the man on the left has been instructed to point to the trees and that's absolutely wonderfully done. Very well done indeed. Three dimensionality, well the sun is relatively low. The trees are bare and so we have these wonderful shadows and shadows do it for me. It's all about shadows. It's all about light against shadow giving us three dimensionality. I'm going to be quite severe and have a look at your EXIF data. And here we have a 30th of a second. Now that's wonderful and it's probably about the limit of what you can sensibly hand hold. Your aperture F16, terrific, well done. Really, really good depth of field. And I'm, I'm looking into this, the trees are sharp, the archway is sharp, the paving stones in the front are sharp. I like that a lot. Could anything further have been done to it? Well, had you considered vignetting very, very slightly, would that have improved it? I don't know. Give it a try. See what works. But that image is a goodie. I like that a lot. Aperture f16, exposure time of 30th of a second. Focal length 24 millimeters, no ISO, ISO data coming through on the EXIF data, but nonetheless, I think it's well taken. So, well done on that one. That's a goodie. Diana number two. Now we are cooking on gas. Well, well, well. Now, Mo said, What the hell is he talking about? Three dimensionality. What does he mean? Oh, I know, he said round things. So what have you chosen? A cabbage. Now it's the sort of thing that we call a photographer's photo and it's wonderful. I like that a lot. You've chosen this round thing, you've chosen the lighting position so as to give us three dimensionality. We've got light on one side of the, uh, uh, the cabbage and some shadow on the other side of the cabbage. Not quite certain why the shadow's in the middle and the light bits are on the top right and the and the base of the photo. Maybe turning the whole photo over 180 degrees would have improved that. Well, try it and see. But it's a very, very good application of the challenge uh, three-dimensionality. I like that a lot. Beautifully stroked vignetted an aperture has been chosen look at that ladies and gentlemen look at the background it's totally soft brilliant the cabbage itself is pin sharp i like that that's wonderful interesting vignetting um a little bit harsh i would say uh, but nonetheless it's good to see it because it takes my the the focus of my attention in towards the cabbage so that's great a really good approach at three dimensionality i like it a lot well done diana i'm going to look at your exif data you know i am a fifth of a second now i know for sure that you put it on a tripod you put your camera on a tripod to take that photo because none of us none of us can hold a fifth of a second and get that sharp an image. It's really good. Aperture 4.5. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. You know already that Diana has chosen 4.5 so as to get a very shallow depth of field. So the cabbage is pin sharp in the front and everything in the background, whatever it is, sea, trees, Auntie Mabel, I don't know, is soft and out of focus. Very, very well done indeed. I like that. Um, and I'd encourage you to, to do some more like that. Maybe I could uh, think of another challenge that um, has to do with mm, vegetables. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, it could be a, 
a good challenge there. Thank you for giving me that idea. And a good stroke, good vignetting, and brilliantly taken photo. Well done. I like that a lot. Diana 3. Now, the horizon does seem to be horizontal. The subject matter of this, uh, this pier is off-center. It's on the third. I like that a lot. The sky is very well chosen. And I suspect it was quite a windy day because I can see mooring buoys and white caps and waves. And uh, that's probably quite an extreme day. So, well seen photo, very well seen photo. However, when I look at it, I zoom into it, it's actually not quite sharp. Now, is it that the focus is off? Or is there a little bit of camera movement? Well, it might be easy to see if I look at your EXIF data. An exposure time of a thirtieth of a second. Well, you could have, you should have been able to hold a thirtieth of a second, but I suspect you didn't, and I suspect you didn't use a tripod as perhaps you might have done. An aperture of f sixteen. Good choice. So everything's in sharp, in, uh, should be sharp, including the nearest posts, the whole of that walkway, and the opposite bank. But frankly, it's not sharp. Therefore, it's a little bit of camera movement. Now, if you did use a tripod, perhaps the tripod was being buffeted in the wind. Uh, perhaps uh, a weight, put your handbag on the tripod and just hold it down. Um, 30th of a second you should have been able to handhold that um, and get it sharp but I think it maybe it was a windy day there's a little bit of movement in there it's not as sharp as I would expect with an aperture of f16 well seen well composed and I like the stroke very well done that's just the thing to do to attract the attention of the judge and show the limits of the photo against the uh, the blackness of the screen. So well done. I like that a lot. Thank you, Diana. <coughs> Jeff one. Now Jeff decided to give us a portrait orientation of this scene in the church. <coughs> Now the difficulty here is that the light is very, very soft. And so there's no real high light to the round things. And I guess the round thing that took Jeff's attention was the candlestick holder in the foreground. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but we're not seeing any real roundness in that candlestick holder because of the softness of the light. Um, further, if I zoom in on that, I'm afraid the candlestick holder isn't sharp. The background isn't sharp, but I don't want it to be sharp. So I have to have a look at the EXIF data here. And for some extraordinary reason, Jeff has chosen to, uh, an aperture of f22. Now that would mean that everything from the foreground through to the background should be absolutely pin sharp. And that's really not what Jeff was intending. I'm sure that Jeff was intending to get the... Uh, the candlestick holder to be sharp and the whole of the background to be soft and he could have achieved that with a small aperture number small number big hole small number big hole shallow depth of field further Jeff has used an exposure time of two seconds now there's no one on this planet that can hold a camera steady for two seconds so I feel confident that it should have been taken on a tripod with an aperture as big a, a hole as possible, low number, maybe f4, f2 if you can do it, if your lens can do it. Um, focal length is fine. I don't know what your ISO was. I rather suspect it was pretty high, maybe 400, and it could have been lower. Um, nothing wrong with two seconds exposure time but you have to use a tripod it's imperative aperture for this task 
had to be f4, f2 if, you can, if your lens can do it. So well seen, a uh, few technical issues there, but nonetheless uh, you've seen something that has some potential and thanks for entering that. <clears throat> Jeff number two. Now this is more like it, now this is sharp. And because it's sharp, when I zoom in, everything is pin sharp. So either Jeff has used a tripod or he's put his camera onto a, a, a stool or a, a, the back of a, um, a pew or something in this church. Now what about three dimensionality? Well, where is the light coming from? And the only hint I've got for three-dimensionality is the light coming through from the right-hand side, giving me these flecks of coloured light uh, down on the, uh, the carpet and up on the, uh, uh, the ceiling on the top left-hand side. So it's, it's really not very three-dimensional. Let's have a look at the EXIF data and see whether we can learn something. Uh, again, a 20th of a second exposure time for Jeff, which does mean that it's either hand held, but held onto a, uh, um, a stool or a, a, a pew, uh, or he used a tripod, and I suspect he has used a tripod. Now, extraordinarily, he's got an aperture of 5.6. Uh, I don't quite know why, but it's a perfectly good aperture for this record photo. So, uh, well done on that, Jeff. Keep trying, and uh, be sure to use manual and override. Choose your own ISO. Choose your own uh, aperture, and choose your own shutter speed, having decided on your subject. Jeff number three. Now, this is more like it. Here we've got some real three-dimensionality. I love the way the fence is coming in, from the left hand side. The light through the gaps in that fence lighting up the edges of the fence planks as it were and leaving the, the side nearest us in shadow giving us a real three dimensionality. Further it's providing a leading line together with that marvellous shadow on the uh, on the pavements there which is taking us into the photo so I like that from the point of view of three dimensionality you've ticked the box so we have a leading line bringing us in both from the left and from below into the promenade here uh, and then we look at the promenade and we expect to see a lady in a red anorak uh, but I can't say that I can see one so what you needed, Jeff, is to take a lady with a red anorak and park her on the seat or walk her up and down on that promenade. And, uh, you know, some people joke about it, but if you have leading lines, the leading lines have to take us somewhere. They have to take us into a subject. And at present, it just takes me to a bunch of empty seats. Um, I love the sky. Very well chosen. I love the way that you've led us into the photo. And that's a very good effort. Thank you, Jeff. Good man. I am going to look at EXIF data, if it will turn up. Now, tell me, Jeff, why on earth have you set the aperture at 5.6? Why, oh, why? You wanted everything to be sharp, including the foreground and the background. So you should have gone to an, F an aperture of at least F11 and probably F22. Why, oh, why have you gone for a shutter speed of a two thousandth of a second? You'd use that to freeze motion. There's nobody moving in this picture. So I have a suspicion of how you took this photo, and you must read your handbook. You've got to know how to set your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture. Read the handbook, Jeff. You've got to master this. You're getting there. But there's a little way to go yet. I can't understand why you've shot at 2,000th of a second. Nonetheless, there's a learning point. You're doing well. Keep making progress. You'll be top of the class soon. Well done. Iris number one. Ah, 
Now, this is absolutely astonishing. Look at this. What did Mo say? What the hell does David mean? Three-dimensionality. Oh, yes, round things. So Iris, ladies and gentlemen, has chosen an Easter egg full of little Easter eggs. What a wonderful choice. Very well done indeed. She's actually chosen quite a difficult one because the internal Easter eggs are covered in uh, metallic foil. And you know, and I know, the difficulties of taking anything with shiny metal in them. We did that last year. But Iris has achieved it. Further, look at the stroke. Now, you may or may not be able to see it, but if you zoom in on that stroke, you'll see it's chocolate brown. Well, clever girl. Well done, Iris. I like that. Yes, you're keeping your skills hidden from us, aren't you? Not on this one. You've shown us your real skill. I like that a lot. And you've put it, what, on a glass shelf with some sort of grey background? Let's have a look at the EXIF data. Let's see. Aperture 32. Well, blow me down. Now, why on earth have you chosen an aperture of f32? You know that that's going to put everything sharp from the very foreground to the distant background. But, ladies and gentlemen, you'll, know that you'll notice that the background is purely a grey wall. So there is no background to worry about it being sharp. But I still don't understand why you've taken it at f32. Okay, well you did. Your exposure time, a 500th of a second. Now isn't that interesting? Why did you choose a 500th of a second? Didn't use that nasty green setting on your camera, did you? I know you didn't. So that means your ISO was pretty high. Why? Why, oh why, did you use a high ISO? and a very, very fast shutter speed, and an aperture at 32. Come on, be a big girl now, read your handbook, override the automatic, go for manual, set it up, use your camera as a light meter, do a little bit of doubling and halving, and choose appropriate values. You know how to do that. Very, very well chosen, very well taken little bit worried about the exit. Am I being hard? Am I being a hard judge today? Yeah, but there you go. You're good enough to take it. Well done. Iris number two. And here we have a perfect example of a magazine advert. Iris has chosen to take this photo of the, uh, the scent and the flowers. You'll notice that the scent bottle is sharp. The flowers are drifting into softness. Very well ta uh, chosen um, aperture. I'll look at the EXIF data in a moment and prove myself wrong. But I think you have a very appropriate aperture. Now how on earth you've done this oval with the image in the middle doesn't concern me. What concerns me is that you have done it and it's made quite a different photo. I don't think anyone else has done that, so that's a good step forward. Well done. I like the brown background and I further like the slightly darker chocolate brown stroke around it. So there's a lot of skill gone into this and I'm, I'm confident that it's all your own work. So well done. Let's have a look at the EXIF data. Aperture F20. Okay, well, you know what I'm going to say. I want the label on the sense bottle to be pin sharp. I want the flowers in the background to be soft. But you've chosen an aperture of F20. Why? An 800th of a second. That's a cracking fast exposure time. Was something moving? Were those flowers about to run away from the middle of the photo? It's still life. Why did you need an 800th of a second? Ah, I know what you're going to say. The ISO was high, wasn't it? Why? The lower the ISO, 
the greater the quality of the image. So find out on your camera how to go to manual. Use your camera as a light meter. Go to manual. Set your ISO on 100. Set your aperture, in this case I would say at f4. And take an appropriate shutter speed with your camera on a tripod. It's beautifully post-processed with this oval and this chocolate brown shape and the, the darker brown um, uh, stroke. Yeah, I'm impressed with that. I just don't understand your EXIF data. Iris number three. Well, here we have what might otherwise be called a record shot of the three cyclists, I take it it's outside Morrison's, with a wonderful sky. Unfortunately, the sky is showing me some dirt on your sensor. Uh, right hand corner, there's two spots, and left hand side, uh, three quarters of the way up, there's another fluff bunny. Uh, looks like your sensor needs a bit of cleaning. Um, maybe I'll bring a puffer when I see you next. Um, look at the way Iris has chosen to position this, ladies and gentlemen. So the cyclists have somewhere to uh, cycle into. The fact it's an imaginary bike and all we're seeing are cogwheels and the uh, cyclists' silhouettes themselves. Um, but it gives us the idea that they can cycle into the space on the right hand side. So that's very well positioned. I like that. <clears throat> the light is uh, at this time um, such that the shadow of the arm of the nearest cyclist is cast onto his body, giving us a sense of three dimensionality. And that's where we're going with this. Don't forget the task. The task is three-dimensionality, and this, by virtue of the time at which you took it and the position of the sun, has achieved that. So, well done. Right, well, here we go. Let's be a hard judge again. Let's have a look at the EXIF data. And what have we got here? A 1250th of a second were these cyclists doing 30 miles an hour across the screen. Well, must have been a miracle. <laughs> Aperture 22, F22, extreme depth of field. Why? Why? I don't know. Well, I suspect your ISO was very high indeed, because it was a bright day maybe, but it didn't need to be. Your shutter speed didn't need to be so high as that, unless there is movement involved. And the aperture, well... If you wanted that sky to be dead sharp, f22 is fine, but wouldn't it have been better at f4 so the sky was blurred into softness? Okay, well, some interesting learning points there. Thank you for submitting, and uh, I hope you've got your handbook to hand. Mo1. Ah, yes. Yes, now Mo's done a David on this one. Um, can you see, ladies and gentlemen, this motorcyclist beautifully exposed, beautifully positioned in the frame, with the handlebars turned such there's somewhere for the motorbike to move into. And the image of the motorcyclist is pin sharp, but look at the background. Soft, ideal, just exactly what we want. But is it genuine? Well, I suspect there's a little bit of photo manipulation jiggery pokery going on here. And I'll show you where to look. If you look at the trouser leg, you see that edge of the trouser leg there. And if you look at the top of the crash helmet, just up there, you see how that crash helmet is sun suddenly blurred. A bit like the background's blurred. So it's a good attempt, Mo. It's the sort of thing I do and I hope to get away with. But I'm afraid, Mo, you didn't get away with it, mate. Good bit of photo manipulation, triggery pokery, and I like it a lot. 
you'll also notice, well I don't know if it's showing on your screen, there is no EXIF data. Cunning, cunning. He's taken off the EXIF data and get, just given us the photo. It's well taken. It's sharp where it should be sharp. It's soft where it should be soft. But the cutout hasn't quite been 100%. Am I being fussy? He's nodding his head. Yes, I am being fussy. Good stroke. Very thin. Two pixels. Mid-grey, not red. Excellent. Um, with uh, an appropriate aperture, had he read his handbook, which I somehow doubt, somehow, sometimes, um, that uh, green waste bin would have been lost into insignificance. And, um, yes, it's distracting me. Now I've seen it, the green waste bin is troubling me horribly. Is it th showing three-dimensionality? Of course it is. Is it artificially achieved? Of course it is, but it's certainly addressing the task. Three-dimensionality, well achieved. Thanks, Mo. I hope he doesn't mind me ribbing him. Well, he's sitting next to me, so he can poke me if he likes. Mo number two. Ah, the classic round things. What a good idea. A bit like Iris's Easter egg, Mo has chosen seven eggs. Six in a holder and one in an egg cup. How well chosen. Beautifully exposed. Uh, there's no EXIF data, so I can't moan about his EXIF data. But he's vignetted it. Top right, top left, beautifully vignetted. Light from the left and some from the right, giving the roundness to these eggs. Just exactly what we asked for. Perfectly done. Um, stroke. Interesting stroke, sort of rounded edges. I, I take it that that's uh, um, something that his particular software will do at the click of a button, and it's well done. I like that. Um, compositionally, it's it's very symmetric, and it's almost a pattern picture by virtue of the six eggs and the one in the egg cup. Um, if I were to be very picky, not that I'm ever very picky, well, sometimes, um, the top egg is very, very near to the edge. And I like a little bit more space, just a couple more millimetres uh, above the top egg. Um, the others are perfectly sharp, and I, I like them very much. I'm not too certain about the little lion painted on the eggs. He's turned them all around. So the lions are facing us. Cunning, cunning. Yes, yes. Very cunning indeed. Well done, Mo. It's achieved it. It's addressed three-dimensionality. And uh, it was original. So it's up there in the, in the top rankings, I think. Well done, Mo. Good man. Mo number three. Well, he's found us here one of these intriguing jigsaws of, of timber and lit it in such a way that some faces are in the light, some faces are in shadow, some faces are actually cast in quite hard shadows and this gives me a clue as to how this was lit. So it's very well seen and very well thought of. It's not round exactly but it is three dimensional. So I like that a lot. It's very, very well done. And did I ever tell you about the the, the way I judge? The S-I-L. Story, intrigue, and does it make the judge laugh? Well, does this score on any one of those bonus points? Story, pass. Does it make the judge laugh? Pass. But it is intriguing, so he gets a bonus mark. For it being an intriguing image. Sharp through the grain of the timber. Um, dropping into softness as the timber gets further and further away. Uh, cunningly he has deleted the EXIF data. So I can't criticise his EXIF data. Um, and that's a shame because I'd like to see how he's taken it. It's well lit, well seen and well thought about. Uh, how could it be improved? It's a little bit burned out on the white 
pieces of timber and uh, therefore I'd like to see the exit date of the exposure just so I can nag him about the uh, the ISO and um, other than that it's well seen well done man Suzanne number one SIL it's intriguing what on earth is it is it ceramic is it paper is it foil is it somehow a reflection it's wonderful I love it it's doing lots for me that's a terrific image it's a little small in my screen I'm going to have to enlarge it and having done that it's losing some of its sharpness but I am coming to appreciate the uh, uh, the double stroke the black mount and then a white stroke outside that um, the sharpness has been achieved uh, and softness in what I take to be the background um, very intriguing image it's a little central for my liking and I think had the the uh, the center bright spot been off centered um, offset a little it would have been a, a slightly stronger image uh, nonetheless it definitely gets the bonus point for being intriguing as I have no idea what it is at all perhaps you'll be kind enough to tell me uh, when we are on the train on Wednesday let's have a look at the EXIF data a fifteenth of a second it's got to be taken on a tripod or somehow braced on a stool or a stand aperture 4.3 brilliant very very appropriate sharpness in the foreground dropping into softness in the background well chosen here's a lady that's read her handbook well done Suzanne and uh, I can't see your ISO but nonetheless I wonder what this is it's a very good photo Suzanne well done just reposition it before you put it into your camera club very slightly off center the uh, the point of interest and um, I think that's brilliant I wonder if it works upside down or even turned 90 degrees to the right I think it does give it a try I think that's a goodie yeah very good indeed 15th of a second at 4.3 love it well done well done Suzanne next one Suzanne 2 now when I first saw this I was intrigued what is it and I think it's a mushroom but it doesn't matter if it's not it's a wonderfully seen image very imaginatively taken and I'm going to have to zoom in to have a closer look and when I do it seems not to be quite as sharp as I'd like it to be now I don't know why that is and it might be we'll look at the EXIF data in a minute and see if we can tell a few things I like the uh, well it's a frame it's almost as if you've got on your uh, photo manipulation jiggery papery software uh, uh, a, a frame effect rather than a stroke and that works for me that's fine um, and I very much like the way you've positioned this mushroom uh, off center with uh, a little bit of negative space on the right hand side let's have a look at the exif data and see if we can discern something a 60th of a second that's good that's good you can hold handhold that aperture 3.7 very good to give a sharpness in the nearest point and uh, or the point of focus and softness in the background well chosen yes I like that a lot you are mastering this technique and you are mastering it very well I like the idea of taking a photo of a mushroom I like the composition of it I like the the frame that it's been put in not all judges would like that they, they might have preferred a simple stroke um, but you do it to enjoy it and you do what you like and I like it too so that's very good indeed I'm impressed with that one well done Suzanne just isn't quite as sharp as I would have expected 
had it been on a tripod. Next one, Susani 3. Ah, speaking of sharpness, here we have what I take to be the bark of some wood. Um, or is it another strange sort of mushroom that I don't understand? And it is pin sharp. Love it. Very good indeed. Lit in such a way that it's achieving three-dimensionality. The foreground, the nearest part of this uh, wood shaving is pin sharp. The furthest part of the wood shaving is soft. The background is soft and the lighting is appropriate. I like that a lot. Um, if I were to uh, be really picky, I think I'd like it placed very slightly off-center, one way or the other. And it may work rotated 90 degrees. Don't know, try it. You see what works, see what you like. So uh, Suzanne has chosen to give us this image which demonstrates her expertise of getting something sharp where it's supposed to be sharp, drifting into softness because of the aperture she's chosen, and a soft background. Well done, Suzanne. I think you're very nearly top of the class. Very nearly. You're certainly coming on really well. No EXIF data. Good, uh, good stroke. Black background and a white stroke around that. And I'm beginning to see a very, very thin inner stroke as well. One, maybe two pixels. Um, very well post-production, post-produced. So yeah, I like that a lot. Well done, Suzanne. Um, terrific image, terrific image. So we've got Terry number one, who's chosen to give us a, a book ending between the, uh, the tree on the right and the bushes on the left. And he's um, brought along with him a lady in a pink anorak uh, who he has asked to stand on the one third of the way in so that's well thought of very well positioned and composed i don't know how many you took whether the lady was walking towards you uh, and you could stop her and start her whether she was under your control or just a by uh, a passerby uh, nonetheless that's giving us a good look in with bookends it's not quite a leading line and a solid base on the photo. I like that. Well chosen Sky, you obviously had a a, um, a telephone call to the, uh, the weather gods and arranged the sky to be perfect. I like that sky. Unfortunately, the lighting is a little bit soft and so we're losing some of the roundness of the, uh, the pole, that um, pole there, which is probably a ventilation pipe for the uh, uh, for the sewers down below it doesn't look like a lamp it doesn't look like a telegraph pole I think it's just a ventilation pipe um, and as such I think it's it's getting towards three dimensionality by virtue of the dark tree on the right hand side and the book end of the of the uh, bushes on the left I love the composition of the lady in the correct position and uh, so well done on that. Don't know if we can have a look at the EXIF data, just to be really, really mean to you. Uh, F11, good depth of field on F11, uh, a 640th of a second. Um, well, I, I take it the lady was moving. I've got a feeling it might have been a little bit windy. Um, but that probably betrays a higher than a higher than necessary ISO, and it may have been best to have overridden the ISO and taken it down to a 100 ISO, and about a 100th, maybe a 200th of a second exposure. Um, so being a bit picky this time, but you're all so good that I've I've got to find something to say. Otherwise, everyone's going to say, "Well, they're all good," and. Uh, we can't improve them. This is well seen, well taken, well framed. Thanks, Terry. Let's move on to Terry number two. Now, this is astonishing. This is the sort of photo that your grandmother would say, why on earth did you take that? It's a photographer's photo, and it's very, very well seen. 
the long shadow with the low sun very well seen the three dimensionality of this bollard uh, uh, is shown by the light on the right hand side the shadow on the left hand side I like that a lot both in composition and in principle I hope you took lots of them I hope you put your camera much lower down because I rather feel that this is a 5 foot 8 f8 image uh, whereas you could perhaps have taken the camera down low got close up to the uh, the bollard and seen what else you could do with it of course you may say well that would have then included some background which might have been clutter you know clutter like green waste bins or uh, other other things that uh, we've seen in some of the previous photos i can't remember whose photo it was with a, a green waste bin but um, uh, he's probably sitting next to me um, nonetheless well seen well taken and it does achieve three dimensionality so well done let's have a look at the exif exif data oh why on earth have you chosen a shutter speed of a 1250th of a second was this bollard about to run away from you was it a moving bollard Aperture 6.3. Mm, I suspect it's a very bright sunny day and someone's camera set itself on a high ISO. You've got to override that ISO. You could have set it down to ISO 100. That would have reduced your exposure time or whichever way you like to think of it, increased it to a 60th or a 100th of a second. Aperture 6.3, can you get it down to an f4? Can you get down to f3.5? I don't know what your lens can do. Um, but the, having a, a lower ISO will, have, will give you a higher quality image. Uh, I hope you didn't use the green button but I suspect the camera's ISO setting was far too high. Very interesting to look at EXIF data. Thank you for including it. Good image, well seen, well composed. It does address three dimensionality. Well done. Let's move on to Terry 3. And uh, this is um, an interesting uh, hanging basket and the Terry recalls a comment that I gave to someone in a previous critique uh, pertaining to I think it was a lantern on that occasion and the shadow that the lantern cast on the wall behind it and Terry has seen that this shadow is giving a three dimensionality to the hanging basket and so that's that's well seen I like that a lot Unfortunately, the basket is hung very close to the wall and the wall has some detail in it which is pin sharp and we could have had that softer. How could we have had that softer? Well, I hear you say by choosing an F number which is low and an appropriate shutter speed and ISO. So let's have a look at the EXIF data and what have we got? A four thousandth of a second. Oh my goodness gracious me. <clears throat> Was this hanging basket about to zoom off into space at a million miles an hour? Aperture 7.1 why? Therefore your ISO was probably way up in the 800 region. I'm guessing you may say it's not it was a thousand but why on earth did you let the camera take a photo at a four thousandth of a second it's it's pretty much still life you've got all the time in the world to take a meter reading with your camera think what's the ISO that I need answer 100 what's the aperture I need answer f3.5 and, and, and take an appropriate um, exposure time maybe let the camera choose the shutter speed but a four thousandth of a second 
I think, Terry, you've taken the prize for the fastest shutter speed in the whole selection today. Um, so this is obviously a photo of a high-speed hanging basket. And as such, uh, you've certainly frozen the action. So thank you for that. Composition is good. Three-dimensionality has been addressed. And uh, with my um, somewhat hard criticisms today, I hope we've all learned from each other's photos. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I have to declare the winner. And the winner quite easily quite easy for me to choose and I know you will all agree the winner is